With the 2023 season in the books for the Cincinnati Bengals, Joe Burrow met with the media to provide a bit of a health update and a little bit of a look forward to 2024. You are Locked On Bengals, your daily Cincinnati Bengals podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Bengals fans and welcome to another episode of the Locked On Bengals podcast. I'm your host Jake Lisko. He's your host James Rapine. We're part of the Locked On Podcast Network here on Locked On Bengals and if you're new to the show you can find us on YouTube or anywhere you get your podcast. We'll have you covered throughout this. Promises to be a crazy off season and you can become an everyday or you can become part of the first listen club by subscribing on either of those platforms today's episode brought to you by prize picks the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports go to prizepicks.com slash locked on nfl use promo code locked on nfl to get a first deposit match up to 100 dollars. and joe burrow gave us a lot to talk about as he met with the media on monday james zach taylor honestly did as well and we'll get to that tomorrow most likely but joe burrow go- comes first haven't heard from him for a while won't hear from him again for a while most likely and at least in this context won't hear from him again and start with uh, the the health of that wrist james and what when, when he expects to be back and able to throw yeah joe burrow talking a few seats down from where i am right now at paycor stadium recording and first time we've heard from him since the day he announced and and the bengal's announced that he would be out for the season Things are going well, progressing well. He's he's doing his normal workout, everything that he can, because we know how much Joe Burrow likes to work out. And he's hoping to be able to throw by OTAs. And so uh, I, I would say we're, we're still a few months away from, from seeing that Joe Burrow social media video that I'm sure some have thought about, especially over the, the past 48 hours or maybe the conclusion of the, you know, the playoff fate of the 2023 Bengals. But yeah, I, I think things are where they expect to be. And I even asked him about gripping. And, you know, like I said, I know he loves to lift. So he, he said he's not gripping anything yet. Still a few months away from that. So I think things are progressing. At the same time, he's he's still a ways away. And the good news is this injury, he's not going into the offseason needing surgery. He had it. He, he gets a jump on it. And, and so hopefully – we are talking about a, a close to 100% Joe Burrow for the offseason program. And uh, who knows? But uh, I think that's certainly his goal. When we got the details about the specific surgery, the specific ligament that needed repaired for Joe Burrow, you do some Googling, you look around at the return to play, the return to 100% for that particular surgery, that particular injury. It's a about as serious as a wrist injury as you can imagine and the throwing hand of your quarterback that's obviously far from ideal but i mean that's a six-month recovery was what i saw when when we were looking at you know the the various web sources for that particular ligament recovery so getting back for otas that would be great to, to miss as little time in terms of football activities as possible and like you said the, the conditioning and any strengthening that, that he wanted to work on sounds like a bit of a point of frustration for him as far as upper body goes. He said they're working on trying to find ways for him to keep his upper body engaged in some of those workouts, certainly plenty of lower body work, and he can continue to work on that aspect of what he wanted to do last offseason with Im- improving his athleticism and explosion just a little bit and, and some of the lower body work. So at least... That can continue. He also talked about that. I guess he was asked about it. The the bit of a an unwanted silver lining was the way the question was was posed to him as far as getting to the off season a little bit earlier, getting those few extra weeks. And while everyone will take a break and some players will have their own off season surgeries, he did spin that as as something that he saw as an advantage as far as getting ready for twenty twenty four as well. Sure. And it is, I, I, I think it was interesting as he was talking, it's 
there's so many questions and, and on the pod, even this week, we'll be discussing the off season and future plans. Next segment, we will be talking in five minutes. We're going to be talking about the future of T Higgins and he just wasn't there yet. Like as far as like changes to the offense and if they could implement things. And, and I, I think that does show like just how quick, even though we've known now for eight days that they weren't going to the postseason, that uh, it, it's, it's still, he's, he's been around the team focused on the team and, and with them. And yeah, you, you just, you hope that, that this wrist thing, to me, because you're right, it is serious. It's not like he broke his wrist. Like that, I, I think that's what the the I don't even want to say funny part, but like Jake said said after the Jake Browning, to be clear, not Jake Lisko, said after the game on Sunday, he was like broke his wrist or whatever he did. That would have been probably way way better <laughs> without looking at recovery times. It would like no doubt, like no doubt that like oh my god, like you know you have to go surgery and we're talking about a ligament and we're doing and and so. I think he was pretty reluctant to put a, a specific time frame on it. He used OTAs because I think that's his goal. And uh, yet I think all of us agree that we don't want him rushing back for OTAs either. And not that he would rush back or ever rushed back, but uh, get 100%. And, and now's the time. And, and I do think he can do that this off season. That's realistic. And he can walk into training camp at 100%. And that's exactly what we want to see. It's crazy to think about, so reported to be scapho ulnate ligament, which is the ligament between your scaphoid and your ulnate and your hand. It's, if you're looking at your hand, there's little tiny bones down here. If you're watching on YouTube, at the base of your hand, like right by your thumb, it's just a little ligament in here. It's about this wide, connecting two little bones in your hand. And, and for those of you who can't see on YouTube, you, you look at, you can Google it, I guess, the, the scaphoid and ulnate in your wrist, it's just a tiny little it's a scaffold and lunate, sorry, sca scaffold lunate, tiny little, tiny little ligament need to go in there, have a whole surgery, six months recovery. Crazy to think about the human body sometimes in those ways. Maybe that's just me. Uh, I, I nerd out about anatomy sometimes a little bit. Yeah, no, I, I get it. And I, I think uh, everyone will be, all of our listeners are going to be paying attention uh, to that. And, and hopefully it's, it's quick. Hopefully it's it, by quick. I mean, hopefully it's uh, effective. Let's say it that way because quick, quick doesn't really matter now for the next few months. It's, it's about him getting healthy. And um, like I said, hopefully that social media video, we'll see it in, in April or May and, uh, and he'll be able to go through his off season training regimen because I'm sure there are things that he's hoping to, to, to work on and improve on. And he didn't dive into those. I'm not sure he's necessarily mapped those out completely yet. But uh, whether or not T. Higgins will be one of the receivers catching passes from him, that was certainly a topic and one that he had an opinion on and shared thoughts about multiple times because we circled back. And I know I circled back after Paul Daner Jr. asked about it and then uh, Jay Morrison circled back at the end. And so let's discuss what Joe Burrow had to say about T. Higgins and his future. We'll do that coming up next. Today's show is brought to you by FanDuel. FanDuel is America's number one sports book. And FanDuel right now is going to give new customers $150 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place a $5 bet. So maybe you want to place a $5 bet on the Lakers, even though LeBron's Lakers continue to stumble in the NBA. Well, you can use that $150 in bonus bets on the NFL playoffs. It, it You can mix and match. You can use it on uh, $5 here, and then you can use that $150 on different things, different options. They have prop bets. You can go same game parlays. Maybe you think that the, the Ravens are going to lose next week. Maybe you think that the Texans are going to beat the Browns. Maybe you think that the Bills are going to crush the TJ Wattless Pittsburgh Steelers. See what I did there, Jake? Uh, you can do all of those things and make all of those wagers at FanDuel. So visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to make your first bet a layup. And you'll get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place a $5 bet. Again, that's FanDuel.com slash locked on. FanDuel, official partner of the NFL. Fair to say that Joe Burrow thinks T. Higgins will be part of the Cincinnati Bengals football team next year. I think that you and I agree with that sentiment. 
James, I, I don't think anything Burrow said today about Higgins. We can get into the the various quotes because there's a laundry list of quotes related to Joe Burrow's opinion on T. Higgins, one of which is that he expects T to be back. And at one point he said, we expect T to be back. Another point he clarified and said, I can't speak for any everyone. I expect T to be back. And that's the sentiment in the locker room. But pretty clear message. He wants T. Higgins to be part of the Bengals in the future. He thinks T. Higgins wants to be part of the Cincinnati Bengals in the future. He expects T. Higgins to be back next year. But that doesn't really change my outlook, at least short term, on T. Higgins. Does it change yours? It doesn't change it because I didn't think T. was going anywhere. I, right. I do think that, and I, I tweeted, I think it was Sunday night, that there was 0.0003% chance that the Bengals let T. Higgins get to free agency and not tag him. I think it's even lower. <laughs> well, now, well, now it's zero. And I never say zero. And I always say never say never. And you're going to hear me say that a lot this offseason. Well, I'm going to say it. There is a zero chance that they look at Joe Burrow, who is the franchise, and say, oh, well, you expect T. Higgins back? We can keep him for about market value for a year, worst case. But we're just going to let him walk. How? How would you do that without replacing him with who would you replace him with? How would you do that? I don't think there's a chance that they do that. And that throws aside all of the reasons why I already thought it was 0.003% of them letting a player like T walk, who's been homegrown, who's that talented and that valuable and all of those things. So to your point, does it change anything? No, but I think it does reaffirm T Higgins is going to be, either a Bengal or they're going to have some master plan to, to turn him into something that is valuable that you can sell to uh, the leader of your franchise. And so I, whatever that could look like, I don't know, but put it like this, this isn't going to be a, a Tennessee Titans deal with Traylon Burks where you trade the star to Philly, you get a first rounder and you use that pick on a wide receiver. I, I think there's zero chance that that uh that they go that route um with t specifically now could they tag him could they still trade him? i guess there is a chance but i think they would that would mean bringing someone established in or someone really big time that you don't anticipate falling to 18 falling to 18 like i think there's a lot of things that would have to happen and i think those would happen after you would have that replacement in place so never say never but uh the, the chances of the Bengals not tagging T. Higgins and letting T. become a free agent. T., I'm sorry, but never. You're not going to be a free agent this offseason. Yeah, not in 2024, at least. 2025, we'll see. Could be different in 2025. Sure. Uh, and, and that's what doesn't change. Th there's an expectation that T. Higgins is part of the team in 2024, no doubt. They're also going to be working on an extension for Jamar Chase uh, imminently. Joe Burrow also you, said that – go ahead. Are you going to bring up the contract? Yeah, I was just going to say Joe Burrow even said that they made sure they kept that they, they put things in place when negotiating his deal to keep guys like T Higgins around. What was that what you were thinking about? Yeah. And I, I have the exact quote here. It's interesting because Charlie Goldsmith asked about it. And he said, we made sure things were in place that we could, if we needed to. And that's one of the things that, I mean, if you're listening to locked on Bengals, you're a diehard fan and everyone, everyone, just crush, like not everyone, but a lot of people on social media crush Joe Burrow for his contract, especially in Cincinnati. It's like Cincinnati hates franchise saviors that make a lot of money. Like he should make a lot of money. God forbid uh, players get market deals, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's just a market. It's not like he got a deal that he didn't deserve. So the, the Bengals wouldn't have done that if they didn't think they could keep talent around Joe Burrow. And I, in, and Joe made it clear that that was part of the discussion. That doesn't mean he needs to take a cut. It's how you structure it to where the organization feels comfortable, all of those things. So who knows? Maybe extending T, which always should be the, the goal for a player like T, and I think it is their goal. Now, will they be able to find common ground? I don't know. But they do have the franchise tag in their back pocket, and I do think that's a almost a worst-case scenario for the Bengals is they tag T, and th they need to know what their plan is, of course, when they tag him. Mm -hmm. Odds are, based on their history, it will be tag T and make him play out the 2024 season, which is going to make 21 plus million dollars. That's not a bad 
that's not a bad t- uh, deal if that's what happens for T. But I think what Joe said makes it pretty clear. He wants T back. And I, I would say this, an extension is more likely than him, which I just said it would. It, it's not going to happen, than him getting to free agency, yeah. which maybe it's 2%. I don't know what the percentage is. It's probably higher than that. But uh, I, I think that's a, a positive outlook uh, and positive news for Bengals fans. Yeah, I think there is a clear understanding of, of what the contract situations are. I think Joe Burrow is, is involved in those conversations. We heard that from Zach Taylor, actually. We don't need to go too far into the Zach Taylor conversation because there's a lot of interesting stuff there that we can talk about at another time. But he is involved in, in some of these conversations. And obviously, when you're negotiating a deal to be the highest paid player for now in NFL history, you're going to be involved with making sure you can have pieces around you. I think this was part of Joe Burrow's process in the draft as well, as much as I think it was overstated, you know, the force your way out of the number one pick. If you're Joe Burrow refused to play for the Bengals, all that, all those stories were ridiculous. There was a conversation certainly between Burrow and the organization about how the team was going to be put together and, and how they were going to build around Joe Burrow. And, and even if that didn't happen right before, b- before Burrow was drafted, and I think it probably did uh, through, through all the conversations they're allowed to have, those conversations have been ongoing since Burrow's been in Cincinnati, especially since he proved that he is who he is. And so he's part of the process. He, he understands what needs to happen in terms of keeping some of those weapons around. It's something that Despite the numbers, he has prioritized. We'll see what those mechanisms are that he's talking about. I'm, I'm curious about that. I know that they did push some money into void years with his deal to spread out the cap hits a little bit into the distant future, which is not something they typically do. But at least for 2024, Burroughs' cap hit doesn't get huge. It's, it's just $29 million next year, which is to be fair, a big number and the biggest number for the team, but it is 15, sorry, $17 million cheaper Mm -hmm. than the 2025 number, $20 million cheaper than the 2026 number. So those numbers do, of course, rise significantly after 2024. So there's still a lot of flexibility in the 2024 cap year for the Bengals to do whatever it is they need to do to keep the pieces they want on on the team on, on the team. Yeah, and the, the the cash element too of of how they they structured it. That's probably something that they they looked at because if it's if you're T and we can dive into this more, but he probably wants that second year, right? If it's a four year deal, he wants that second year guaranteed, especially uh, given his agent. No doubt. And by the way, I get it, especially with his injury history. And the Bengals are, are going to look at that, and it's a bunch bunch of soft tissue stuff mostly. I don't think it's anything that would would scare me off of a, a soon to be twenty five year old at age twenty five next year, uh, you know next season. Um, no, T is uh, he, he's a heck of a player. So we'll see. I, I I think it's really hard to to let an asset like that walk, and that was unlikely anyways. Now I think it's zero point zero, barring something really really unforeseen. Uh, but never say never. Ha! See, I told you I would say that, Jake. Well, and, and even Burrow's saying that, right? He's saying. You know, he has these expectations, but he's also like, you, you never know. The NFL offseason's crazy and things happen that you don't expect. And sure. He, he that I, point a couple of times too. Can you imagine? Like, I, I don't even know who would make the call. I, I don't know. Duke, Zach, hey, Joe, um, he's going to become a free agent. How do you, th- how do you think that goes? It's just not happening this year. <laughs> I it's just, so far outside of the realm of possibility I, to me. And I like, just don't think that's a fun conversation <laughs> for anyone because Joe, unless it's like, oh, but but this proven player, and I really can't even think of the guy that would is uh, he, he's coming to Cincinnati to play with. You know, like I just I don't understand. People are going to throw out names. Yeah, see, it but would, I, I didn't. That's what it would have to be. I have thoughts on that possibility, which we will uh-huh. get to in a later show, which is why you should subscribe on YouTube, follow wherever you get your podcasts. Up next, Joe Burrow. Well, if he were healthy right now, I think the Bengals would be in the playoffs and be among the Super Bowl contenders in a wide open AFC. My opinion, you might not agree. How can they keep Joe Burrow healthy in 2024? How can Burrow 
stay healthy in 2024. We will get into that coming up next. Today's show is brought to you by Prize Picks. Prize Picks is daily fantasy the way it should be. And if you're like me and you had some success in some season long fantasy leagues, yeah, that's right. You, you, you brought home some winnings. Well, you can do the same with Prize Picks, whether it's NBA, whether it's NFL. Here's how it works you choose more or more than or less than on two to six player stat projections and you watch the winnings roll in. You can win up to 25 times your money, whether it's on. The NFL, whether it's on basketball, all you do is select two or more players, pick more than or less than on their projected stats, and place your entry. You don't have to deal with a bunch of other players, including pros and sharks. It's you versus the projections, and right now you're going to get a first deposit match up to $100. All you have to do is go to prizepicks.com slash NFL and use code locked on NFL for a first deposit match up to $100. It's daily fantasy the way it should be. Again, prizepicks.com slash locked on NFL and use code locked on NFL for a first deposit match up to $100. Just going to offer one closing thought on T Higgins before we move to some of the things that Joe Burrow discussed as far as the offense and staying healthy for 2024, because I somehow didn't make this point when we were talking about it for 10 minutes. The thing that didn't change for me specifically is that I still expect T Higgins to be franchise tagged. I expect the Bengals to work on an extension. I expect that that will be difficult, but I, I do think that it's not exactly apples to apples with Jesse Bates. I, I think that it might be a little bit different one because the Bengals value wide receiver differently. Mm -hmm. and, and two, because you know, Joe Burrow, I think a little bit more involved. I think that's probably a minor thing compared to the positional value and, and everything with T Higgins, but we'll see what happens here. The point is, I, I would be shocked if he's not on the team next year. Beyond that, I, I don't have a good feel for. And and that's what I meant in terms of saying nothing really changed with with the comments outside of hearing that that confidence from Burrow and even from Zach Taylor, which we can talk about, you know, tomorrow as far as his comments. But a, a lot of confidence in T Higgins being part of the team going forward. Yeah, and I asked Zach, and he said, "Hard to imagine not having T." Mm -hmm. and, and and that's the, the standout aspect of it, element of it. But I think that's it, it's trending towards, and that's part of their leverage, by the way, with T. Higgins' agent, David Mulligetta, is, hey, fine, we'll tag him. <laughs> we value him. We want to pay him. L let's play ball here. And I do think the Bengals obviously are willing to pay T more than – than Jesse and, and value that position more historically. We know that. And so hopefully they can get something done because I love the idea of, and maybe it's a three-year deal with T. I don't know. Maybe it's three years, but you have T and then you space it out and, and Jamar, like maybe Jamar's money kicks in. Like, I think they can keep these guys together. I think they can keep that trio together. I don't think that's unrealistic. I, the reason that I pause is because of David Mulligetta, because of how, it felt like from afar the the negotiations went with Jesse Bates. Now it didn't go well, even though he's homegrown and they valued him and they tried. But did they try hard enough? And did they value him enough? Okay, well, with T, he's a wide receiver. Maybe they do. Maybe they say, all right, this is how we we can get it done with Mulligetta. So we'll see. I, I think that's the biggest storyline this offseason outside of Joe Burrow's health, which was obviously a big topic on, on how he can stay healthy moving forward. There's a whole conversation here around whether they should, whether they shouldn't, what, what they quote unquote should do with T Higgins. And we're not going to get to that today. And I know you've got thoughts, James, and, and we've talked about some of these on the sure. show in the past, but you look at where Jamar Chase's money is going to kick in. The fifth year option for him in 2025 would be $21.5 million because he's a multiple time pro bowler. That's as big as the fifth year option could be for Jamar Chase. So if they do extend T Higgins, there will be a pretty big hit for all three of those guys, Burrow, Higgins, Chase, with Chase getting at a minimum a 21, 21 and a half million dollar uh, payday coming in 2025. So we'll see what the extension might look like around Jamar. I imagine that's a priority this offseason as well. But we'll see also if the Bengals continue to break structure and do some different things with some of these stars in terms of guaranteed money, which 
something that we, we will talk about when we talk about the way the Bengals manage the salary cap versus some other teams and, and the way the Bengals structure contracts. And we'll go through a whole 101 on that at some point this offseason as well. But to close today's episode, Joe Burrow talked about some of his plans for 2024, talked a little bit about the under center offense as well is something that, you know, obviously he couldn't do early in the season, something that was obviously effective for this team. And we've said it time and time again, was something that was planned to be part of the offense from the beginning this year. Also talked about maybe tweaking his off season a little bit to, to try to avoid those early camp soft tissue injuries, try to keep himself healthy, keep himself healthy. What, what stood out to you, James, in, in terms of some of the glimpses he gave for his plans for next year? Yeah, I, I think the the, first, the gas pedal part is huge because I, I do think in at the end of the offseason program last year, he, he refer, m- mentioned this. He was like, we're in season now, like in his head. It's <laughs> like, we're in the season. And that doesn't mean that he's going to not do anything, and I don't think he means that. Of course, he's going to do a ton. But you don't want to overtrain, and not that he did, and he didn't say he did. But you got to realize that July is the very early, early, early start to a long grind. And it would be nice if he didn't have to play through. He's as mentally tough as anyone on the planet. I, I really think that. I, I do. And so he can play through things. We know that. We've seen it. And it would be nice if he didn't have to play through as much. And part of it's football. There's going to be bumps and bruises. I get all of that. But the in, in the other aspect of this is if he's dealing with a little soreness day two of camp, maybe maybe dial it down. And, and not practice as hard as he did for two plus hours. Or and just he ne- sit and down. He, and he needs well, yeah, but and he needs to be able to do that too. Yeah, that's all there because a lot of people blame coaches. Or he needs to be able to be like, ah, I'm a little sore today. Instead of throwing the ball a hundred times, I'm going to throw it because he probably won't completely sit down, especially if he's letting off the gas pedal to start camp. But if he only makes fifty throws that day. Or 80 throws that day, including all the warm-up throws, then then we're fine, and we're not even talking about what happened on July 27th. So mm-hmm. I, I think there's that. There's a, a whole other conversation about the offense and under center. Obviously, they planned on doing more of that before his calf injury, too. And what I, I do think is going to be interesting is how much do they utilize that? How much do they utilize some of these different things? Just to give opposing defenses, if anything else, just a different look. Something else to prepare for with Joe Burrow at quarterback. He's already hard enough to prepare for. So I, I do think we'll see more of that next season. And it was always a plan, like I said. And, and yeah. honestly, they've done a lot of the stuff in the past. Zach Taylor, not not again to, to get too far into that since we're focused on what Joe had to say today, but talked about how, once again, there's been a bit of an overstatement as far as how different, quote unquote, the offense has been between Jake Browning and Joe Burrow. So I do think there's something to that. There are obviously some differences. They they stopped doing some things with Jake Browning or did them at a much less frequency. And we've talked about some of those things that are different very clearly, but they're still running concepts they've been running in Cincinnati with Browning. When I mean, Burrow was quarterback as well. And and you just go back to the last couple of years thinking about how every single and and it's great because Jake Browning just yelled at Zach Taylor about no more effing nakeds uh in week 18 but you think back to joe burrow's experience running nakeds meaning a bootleg where there's no blockers and and you're kind of running away from the line of or horizontally from the line of scrimmage after play action and how many times defensive ends just didn't respect the play action and just went after burrow and it it seemed like every time he turned around he was getting hit and that same thing happened to jake browning yesterday where earlier for jake browning that was working great and so it just kind of shows you that nothing is a silver bullet in the nfl everything is very week to week and it's good to remember that. The last thought for me, James, is, is just thinking back to Jamar Chase's comments in camp about how Joe should sit out and it's a long season and all this stuff. I don't think that mattered too much in the end. Burrow's eventual injury was nothing to do with the calf. But as far as avoiding those injuries and avoiding being hamstrung and limited at the start of the season, I was just thinking about this last night. The, the Miami Dolphins started 6-1 and one this year. They had a 70-point game at the beginning of the season. Everyone wanted to be the Dolphins on offense. They finished the season 5-5 five and five since that 6-1 and one start. Mm-hmm. Buffalo started 
five and five, finished six and one. Which team would you rather be right now? Joe Burrow talked about that when talking about that. The Bengals didn't hit their potential this year, that he kind of got hurt at the time when this team usually hits its stride. And, and the point I'm trying to make here is that, yeah, July maybe not the most important thing. Certainly important, but things that happen in the early part of the season – we need to keep a bigger picture view and remember that it is a long season and the way you're playing at the end of the season is probably more important. You don't want to get the one and three starts and the Oh, and three division starts and all that stuff, no doubt, but it is a long season. And I think that's something that's hard for everyone to remember when you get into the day to day and camp and in the early part of the season. No doubt it is. And it's the world we live in this instant reaction world that we're, we're part of too. And, um, at the same time, I think this team has done a good job of it, and they were tested this year more than ever. And that's why, part of why they're on the outside looking in. I asked Joe about that. It's just these injuries. There were more injuries this year to key guys and, and really important, crucial guys that they, they couldn't overcome. He didn't say it exactly like that. I'll say it, though. And uh, obviously, the biggest one being Joe. And um, it was good. Shout out to Bengals PR, by the way, and, and to Joe for talking because he, he didn't have to. I'm glad he did. And uh, I'm sure Bengals fans are too. One last word from the Bengals franchise quarterback for the 2023 season. We won't hear from him for a while in that capacity. Like I said, you might see him on radio interviews here, or there, or whatever he does. No, his... until he joins us. What are you talking about? Until he joins us. Joe's yep. marketing reps, reach out. Mm -hmm. My yep. DMs are open. That's, that's going to happen imminently. Just like those Jamar Chase extension uh, negotiations. One of those more likely than the other yeah in, in the coming on. that's right obviously until next time we'll, we'll have some some thoughts uh from zach taylor we'll have mike renner join us later this week for a little bit of a draft primer first time we're talking about the draft in depth this year so we'll have that content and more coming for you the rest of the week here on locked on Bengals. until then thanks for listening to this episode who day and have a good one